Welcome. Last time we saw that if you have a particle of mass m having some velocity v, then having some velocity v in some random direction, moving, say, in a straight line this way, then we discussed that this particle must have angular momentum. It should have that, right? Okay, today I'm going to talk about how we are going to define angular momentum for this. To do that, first, let's choose a reference point. Here is our reference point. It can be anywhere in space. I'm going to call this reference point as C1. So I'm going to tell you how to define angular momentum with respect to this point. You really have to imagine that this particle can rotate with this or, or go in a circular motion around this point. At first you might say, how do we do that? Because this particle is not really doing it. The way to imagine, at least, at least what works for me is the following. What I do is I imagine that there's some sort of a hook that comes out from here or some sort of a string that extends from here. I drop a perpendicular line from here to here. I'm going to imagine that's some sort of a hook. Okay. Uh, a hook attached to a string. And I, and then I imagine that this is like a plane, an aeroplane that comes and lands over here. It gets attached to this hook over here. And once it does that, it's forced to go in a circular motion. And that's how I imagine that this particle can undergo circular motion with respect to this point, or it has some circular motion with respect to this point. Okay. And notice that circular motion in this case is, is clockwise, right? Yeah, it's clockwise. Okay. So now the definition of the angular momentum is the following. The angular momentum of the particle with respect to this point. So I'm going to call this as, as C1. We define it as the momentum of the particle P multiplied by R perpendicular with respect to point C1. And R perpendicular is this distance. Okay. This is our R perpendicular. You can think of this as the as the radius of the circular motion uh, with C1 as center. That's what you can think of this as. Since P is mv, we can also write this momentum, angular momentum as mv times r perpendicular with respect to C1. And notice that this is the vector quantity and uh, it should have some direction. And the way we're going to use direction is again right hand rule. Anything that is circulating, we're going to use right hand rule. Since it's going clockwise, we're going to use our encircling fingers to show the direction of the circular motion. And the thumb will then represent, the thumb will then represent uh, the angular momentum. So in this case, the angular momentum is into the book over here. Now the problem is, I can get a completely different answer for angular momentum if I choose a completely different reference point. So imagine I, I choose a reference point which is over here. Let's say this one, C2 I call that. Now with respect to this point, the angular momentum would be, again you have to imagine this is some sort of a hook that comes out from here, some sort of a string or some sort of a hook to which this mass can attach to, you go back in time, back in time the particle was somewhere here, it gets attached to this, and bang, once it gets attached, it goes in circular motion. So quite literally, you can think of this particle going in circular motion with respect to any point you want. And therefore, we can have different, different values for angular momentum. In this case, the angular momentum with respect to this point is going to be mv, again, momentum, multiplied by this distance. So I'm going to call this as R perpendicular C2. Okay. Again, that's the radius. R perpendicular C2. That's the radius of, of the apparent circular motion with respect to this point. And notice this time, the circular motion is clockwise. You see that? It's going to go like this. And therefore, the circular motion is clockwise. And that makes the angular momentum out of the book. Ooh, notice that for the same particle, you get two different values of angular momentum. Uh, also, you can see pretty much from the drawing that LC1 is more than LC2 in magnitude because this is bigger than this one. And this one is into the board. This is out outside the board. I can choose another point. So let me choose one last point. I'm pretty sure you get the point. <laughs> but let me choose one more reference point. Let me call this C3. And the reason I'm choosing C3 is because that's my favorite. The angular momentum with respect to point C3 is zero. I'm pretty sure you can understand why this is the case because 
there is absolutely no perpendicular distance between the point C3 and this direction, right? And therefore, angular momentum is zero. In fact, angular momentum with respect to any of the points which lie on the direction in which the particle is moving or wants to move at this position would be zero. <clears throat> and also, you can imagine in terms of the string which carries the hook. If it comes and attaches over here, then just imagine the string goes and attaches itself over here. Do you think that once this mass comes and attaches to the string, it's going to go in any sort of a circular motion? No, because it needs to have some sort of a tangential component. Uh, or I can say it's, it's to have some sort of a perpend... Whatever. It needs to... <laughs> um, <laughs> it doesn't do that, okay? All right. So, with this intuition that we have with angular momentum, I want to now go ahead and formally define it vectorially. I want to put this thing vectorially. So, let me redraw whatever we have drawn over here. Let me redraw that. So, I'm going to put a line over here. And... Let's consider... That same mass, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna draw it over here. Having velocity v, having velocity v, let's consider again a reference point. You cannot define angular momentum without a reference point. Please remember that. You always need it. So let's say here is our reference point. Then we know by now that the angular momentum of this particle with respect to point C will be mv into r perpendicular with respect to point c and that r perpendicular i'm just i'm just i'm just rewriting whatever we just discussed and that r perpendicular would be this distance okay this dotted line which i've drawn in red color but this time i don't want to write in terms of r perpendicular i want to write it vectorially to do that i'm going to define a position vector over here all right so here is our r perpendicular with respect to c and here is r c that's our position vector and let's say the angle between the two is theta my question is can we put r perpendicular in terms of r we should be able to do that because look at the triangle if you look at the triangle and you take sine theta notice that sine theta is the opposite side which is r perpendicular divided by the hypotenuse which is the magnitude of this vector which is just r with this vector and therefore, I can rewrite this now as L equals mv times times rc sine theta. Ooh, now it's almost ready for vectorial um, vector form because v is a vector and even r is a vector. And look, there's a sine theta. It's a velo it's it's a it's a vector product. So I can write this as either v cross r or r cross v. So we now have to choose which of them is right. And that's where we look at the direction. Notice the direction of the angular momentum. By now we should get this because of the hook and everything. The particle over here would rotate or circulate about this point in the clockwise direction. You notice that? And therefore in this particular example, our angular momentum is into the book. So let's ask ourselves, which cross product v cross r or r cross v which of them gives us an angular momentum into the book well, if you remember your cross products that turns out to be r cross v notice r cross v is the one that does that and therefore vectorially we can now say that this is m into r cross v the sine theta is included inside this cross and we can even shorten this because m times v is the momentum so i can just say it's r cross P. Ta -da. That's our definition for angular momentum. Okay, one last thing I forgot to tell is the units for angular momentum. So let's just write that down. I'm pretty sure that's something you can work out yourself. The units for the angular momentum will be kilograms, meters per second, into meters. So this is going to be a meter square. Kilogram, meters per second meter square per second and this will be our formal definition so sometimes when we have some complicated problems where we need to do with the algebra and everything we're going to use this as our formal definition but other times to understand i'm pretty sure this is much more intuitive rather than looking at the cross product i always like to look at that's my personal choice personal opinion is that i always like to think of it this way okay so that's i hope this gives you some sort of an intuition behind how even a particle which is not going in a straight line uh, which is not going in a circular motion can be thought of as going in a circular motion, can be assigned angular momentum and how it changes depending upon our reference points. Alright, stay tuned. See you next time.